Hey guys, so in this video you will do the Brownian motion experiment which we already talked about uh, and which uh, Einstein used to measure the radius of atoms. You are actually going to estimate the radius of a hydrogen atom at the end of this video. So let's start. So the experiment is this. You're not going to do an actual experiment. You're just going to do the simulated experiment that I made. So go to this link, the Physics Connection HIO, which I will provide in the description. And you'll have to wait a little bit for it to load. Okay, so and you can mute if you want, but I like this music. Okay, so this is the basic idea. It starts at the center, a little particle, and it just moves around in a random direction. If I restart it, it goes up there. Sometimes it goes down there. So you can just keep running it and see how it moves. And you can do the experiment at different temperatures. And each one of these rings, this is... Uh, one micrometer, this is two micrometers, this is three, and this is four, and that's five. So if I restart, now it's at a 200 and it Kelvin and it's going for four seconds. And you can also make it more interesting by betting. You can bet on blue, you can bet on orange. Let's bet on orange. Ooh, so I won. Uh, anyway, so if you are tired of just hitting restart, pause, restart, pause for each uh, measurement, you can just hit results and wait for it to record measurements. If, when you hit uh, results, it just keeps running one after the other, one after the other. And uh, I already recorded uh, many measurements. So if I let it run at 4 seconds at 200 Kelvin, uh, what I get is each oh let's let's go there sorry so what this gives here you get the distance squared which is the distance that the ball has from the center to where it ends up squared this gives the average of that and this gives the average uh, displacement so this is the x average and this is the y average so this 0.3 means that on average it's 0.3 away from the origin and on average it's the y is 0.1 so it's 0.1 above the origin and yeah so this is the measurement that we want to take that's uh, the thing that uh, they used in the experiment to calculate uh, Avogadro's number and if I let it run for about 300 times it gives me this measurement. So for 4 seconds I get 0.86 micrometers squared. If I let it run for 8 seconds I get for example uh, 2 micrometers squared. And so what am I gonna do with this measurement? And I can also let it run for 12 seconds and get that. So what will, what will you we use this for? So basically, let's let me do the slides. So this is the Einstein, the Einstein result. He predicted that the distance squared of the particle is going to be proportional to the time. So when I let it run for eight seconds instead of four seconds, it's going to be twice as far. R here is the gas constant. You can measure it in the ideal gas law. And T is the temperature, we did it at 200 Kelvin. And eta is the viscosity. And if you don't know these units, sorry about that, there's a truck over there. If you don't know these units, that's fine. Uh, R is the radius, and NA is Avogadro's number. So this is what we're trying to measure, and we don't know what it is. But you can uh, take, for example, say, um, one gram of hydrogen and say this is you don't know how much uh, atoms there are in this one gram but you know it's uh you just call it Avogadro's number and this is what the number that we're trying to measure the number of atoms in maybe one gram of hydrogen 
Okay, so after we did this, uh, we did the experiment, the, it gives us a relationship between the distance squared and time, which we already had here. So you can go to uh, Wolfram Alpha and say linear fit. We want to fit the data that we had, that we already made. Say data set XY values. So let's look, look here. So at time equals zero, the distance squared should be zero. So you would put zero here and zero here, just as a first value. The second value, which we had at x equals four seconds, and the distance squared was was 0.86. So you put here 0.86. And then at 8 seconds, we had 2, I think. Yeah. And then that's it. We won't put the last one. And then you hit enter, and it just gives you an estimate of the relationship. It gives you that uh, the y, it gives you the slope of the graph. So this is the graph that we did. This would be time, and this would be x squared. And the slope of it is 0.25. From that slope, we get this relationship. This minus 12 here is just because we have uh, a micrometer instead of meter. So if you convert micrometer squared to meter squared, you get 10 to the minus 12. And so we got for the slope of this relationship, this 0.25 and so now everything is known here the gas constant the temperature the viscosity and the radius of the small particle that you can see in the microscope so putting all that together we can solve for Avogadro's number and that gives us 6 times 10 to the 23 which is very close to the actual number and it's very remarkable that just by watching a little sand particle move we were able to calculate what Avogadro's number is, which is basically just how many particles are there right here. And so we're going to use this further to calculate the size of just one atom. To do that, we are going to say, we are going to take one mole of material, which again, we don't know how many atoms there are, but we know that this is a mole. Just by definition, we call this a mole. And a mole is when there is uh, Avogadro's numbers of particles. So I looked this up online, and so we can uh, use this to find the molar volume of graphite, which is carbon. And that is over here. So this is 5.3 centimeters cubed per mole. So if you put Avogadro's number of these molecules together, you get 5.3 centimeters cubed. So we can use this number and Avogadro's number to measure the volume that an individual molecule has or an individual atom has. And to do that, I just have to divide the total volume, 5.3, by Avogadro's number. So let's go here, back to Wolfram Alpha, so 5.3. divided by six uh, let me get this six times ten to the power of twenty three right five point three is that correct yes so we get for an individual atom, there is 8.83 times 10 to the minus 4 centimeters cubed. Right? And so this is the volume of a little cube surrounding that uh, atom. If we want to say what is the radius of that cube or the length of that cube, you have to take this to the power of one third. 
and this is because the volume of something is just the length cubed. So to get the length from the volume, you do the 1 over 3 power. And this gives us this length associated with one carbon atom. And so it's not very small. It's not. It's bigger than I expected, but it's again very close to. It's on the correct order of magnitude that you would expect. And so just by looking at uh, a little at a, a little sand particle move around in water, we were able to estimate the size of an individual atom. And it's like we can't see it. We can't know what it is, but we through careful thinking and calculations done by Einstein and in future videos we will understand more. I will uh, guide you through the calculation so that you understand all the basic principles and thoughts that are behind it and uh, you will be able to basically understand where this comes from and after you understand where this comes from you can actually you actually know how to estimate the size of atoms so thank you for watching this i hope it was useful i hope it was organized uh, this is the first time i'm uh, recording my screen I, I don't know if it was clear for you so thank you for watching and see you next time